Last night was amazing and memorable, to say the least. But it did feel a bit like a boys club, and I'm concerned. And I want to make sure that the ladies feel respected on the road. So tonight I've arranged to meet three strong females who live and breathe rock and roll. But first, when I need advice on anything to do with this world of ours, I turn to my guru, the wisest man in the business and one of my childhood heroes, truly, Mr. Ian Asbury of the cult. And what better place to shoot the shit than the Museum of Death? Jesse and Ian's big day out at the Museum of Death. Museum of Death. Yes. Right hand side is California Death Room, Manson Murders, Black Dahlia, etc. Left hand side is Suicide Hall, Cannibalism Niche, Theater of Death. If anyone has any questions, comments, concerns, and emotional outbursts, I'll be happy to deal with all your issues when you come out. Enjoy. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Jesus, he's in my heart. I'm filled with Jesus. Jesus wants me to live an abundant human life. How about in here? This is a catafalque. This was used for infant mortality memorial photographs. Yes. How macabre is that, man? This place is like the underbelly of rock and roll, maybe, right? It probably comes from the same energy. Guys that couldn't express it through art, expressed it through... Death. Yeah. Isn't it amazing what human beings do to each other? In rock and roll and on the road, the band member is not just a person on the stage. You know, it's the road crew. The road crew is in the shadow member of the, of the band, if you will. Shadow shock troops. Yeah, exactly, the, the shadow panzers. But um, <laughs> I can't imagine that uh, you wouldn't appreciate the road guy. How has the roadie played itself in, in your experience? There's been a few incidents. I mean, there's been times where I've stepped in to, to uh, help out in a situation. There's been times when I've stepped in to, like, bring someone down. I broke a roadie's a nose in Brazil. Some guys, that, like, lose their minds on the road. I, at one point, was trying to fire, like, three or four members of a road crew because they got hold of some girl and completely defiled her, and, and I found out about it, and I was, like, furious. So I was like, you're, you're all fired. But the thing was, they're all brothers, camaraderie. The whole road crew stood and said, you know what? If they're fired, we're all going too. And I said, fine, all of you go. But things like that were happening all the time. It's amazing in, like, in the hip hop community because misogyny is celebrated. Right, yeah, it's bizarre. And it's been celebrated in rock and roll for so long. You know, it's like the woman is an object and like, you know, wet t-shirt. Absolutely, and I think uh, even Patti Smith's lyrics prove that in Wild Switch. I love to see Patti Smith. I grew up with a mother, like my mom and my sister. And I don't know, maybe it's growing up with like strong matriarchs in my life. My grandmother was really important, she taught me a lot. I remember seeing Zig Zig Sputnik when they played at the Royal Albert Hall and the, all their road crew were women. The whole and, crew? And, and like they're all six foot, they're all Amazons. Oh, that's awesome. That's and they were, all, they were all trooping around. There's a lot of Hells Angels in there as well. But these women dominated the entire room. See, that's fucking awesome. It was so dude. powerful. But it's like something you don't admit to. Right. In certain areas, in rock and roll, it's like you can't talk about those issues or those aspects or that sentiment. Feminism or having a strong uh, respect for matriarchal energy and stuff because it's considered to be weak you know but absolutely. then again we're just all about most rock and rollers are walking around dressed up as girls anyway absolutely you know i mean when you're 21 years old and you've got a 28 waist you are definitely going to wear makeup and high heels yeah absolutely. i hope so that is my fucking hero man that's when i listen to rock you know you get to it from weird places southern death cult my mom would not let me listen to a band called the cult so I had to hide my shirts, and I would hide them in my friend Jason Hancock's garage, my rock shirts. I'd get up in the morning and put on my clothes, then I'd walk to Jason's house, I'd take off my shirt, put on my rock shirt, go to school. I was the only kid who had a dancing shirt that was in pink. I was that kid. Okay, I better make a move, as I have three ladies waiting for me, all of whom have hundreds of stories to tell about life in the male-dominated world of rock and roll. Patty Schimmel was the drummer in Hole, so she not only had to deal with the misogyny in the industry, but had to deal with one Courtney Love as well. Laura Jean Hyde is new on the scene, a rock and roll assassin who has worked with the likes of Alice Cooper and Rob Zombie. And of course, the illustrious Megan Tobin, was lighting tech for the likes of Metallica and Michael Jackson, and as well, basically, everybody else. Rock and roll is kind of a weird place, and 
to be ladies in rock and roll, to be badass, to be uh, respected, it's in no small way a little accomplishment, you know what I mean? Because I've seen some weird boys club shit going on, you know? So I'd like to talk about that and I want you to feel safe with me. Uh, my husband is a wonderful man, you know, so just be safe. There's no threats here. We're all cool. I'd like to start about maybe your beginnings, uh, go around and how we got into the business. I, I went to school in D.C. in like 84, 85, 86, which was a really good time in music in D.C. Absolutely. First, I wanted to be a rock journalist and I had done lighting in high school and I, I worked and did lights at the 930 Club. Then a friend of mine who was in a band in Chicago gave my number to somebody and they called and they said the Buzzcocks are back together and we're going out on the road and we'd really like you to do our lights and I just didn't say anything for a while and then <laughs> got off the phone and then screamed and danced and went out on tour with the Buzzcocks. I started off just going to shows, just kind of meeting, I was just very, I'd go to shows alone um, and I would just force myself to meet people. I was really young and I had like a fake ID and I was going to the 930 yeah. Club and just being like, okay, like I, I want to know how to like do this. Were you 17? I, no, I was 17 when I moved to LA. Take a rock and roll dream, right? <laughs> I managed a couple of like small bands in, that were girl bands. I lived with Tim Armstrong from Rancid, and he was like, if you manage this band, I will sign them. So I got him signed on to Epitaph. We went to Japan, we traveled the world, which got me jobs with Rob Zombie after that, um, Murder Dolls. Time, I, me. <laughs> working with Jesse. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um, I started playing drums at um, 11, and as I started to get older, I'd started playing in punk rock bands. I always felt comfortable playing drums in my scene, you know, like I went, I went to punk rock because I love the music and I love the energy and I also felt safe being, being a freak, yeah. you know, with these people and, I'm, and I'd only seen maybe three women playing drums in my life. And kind of accepting in the punk world at that time, right? I mean, it didn't matter if you were a girl, you were a freak. You right, were one of, right, right. And I right. could see other women playing music I loved, you know, and it was, it's really cool. How do you guys deal with the fucking, for lack of a better term, the boys club? There was a ritual, you know, on, on one of the first big, big tours I did. The stage all, a big giant rolling stage that came together and the underneath of the stage, and this is legendary, was covered in Polaroids of naked girls doing various things with various musical instruments. The entire underneath of this massive stage that filled an arena um, was covered and it was basically a tool to get the stage hands to put the stage together faster in the morning. So the guys would roll in and go, wait till you come see this, guys. Uh, uh. And so it was a big giant joke. It, there's a possibility that they're not meaning it that way, but they're just not willing to understand why it would be shitty for you to have to be around that stuff all the time, you know? There was all sorts of really weird rules. I would have to go out in the crowd and find girls for one of the acts I worked for. <laughs> that was one of my jobs. Their their text would be like that one and that one and that one, you know, or the one that took their top off right there, you know, like go get them right That's now. That's a given, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> That's so easy too. Oh, tits, yeah, I'll take yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, and, and I've seen, I've been the only girl on the crew and seen these girls come into the dressing room and have wild orgies, you know, like <laughs> it's definitely, it's insane. <laughs> A big old redneck guy hired me in DC who had a way bigger mustache than you and you would not have thought that he would have women on his crew and he had a whole bunch and he just would go girls they they work harder and they smell better what's to, what's not to like you know and uh, but uh, you know I got a lot of guys who kept saying you really should come to LA you'll get more work you'll get better work you'll get paid more and when I did I then had to go and work in warehouses and tech lights and teach young guys how to do it right out of high school because the big companies wouldn't put girls out on the road. When I'd go into, you know, go into the music store and, you know, want to get drumsticks, you know, they, I'd, I'd maybe go with my brother and they'd always go up to my brother right, and say, right. what can I do for you there, young man? How many famous women drummers do you know? You were in Hole, and, and that must have been quite a trip with, with stories about road crew, but a person like uh, Courtney, we all probably have our opinions of her, uh, what was it like dealing with, because I, I, I kind of get a sense, I don't know if it's true, but maybe Courtney treats everyone like a roadie. <laughs> and and uh, yeah. Yeah. that's just life, yeah. you know? Yeah, it really kind of had to take sort of a daily sort of temperature of like, are things going slow in her world today or are they going fast in her world today? You know, Patty was very nearly in Nirvana. Patty would be the most important redhead in my whole life. My little redheaded girl. She had these monitors in front of her and we called it the circle of death. And it was pretty much our, the monitor guy that got a lot of crap. 
you know. Managers guys have the worst they do ever. We've heard that a few times, you know, yeah. really. Guns N' Roses fired a monitor guy at least once a day the entire summer that Guns and Metallica were out. Now was it Axel that did that or was it? The During band? the show. Yeah. Th if they made it three songs, we were we were floored. He would fi he, he, he had a, there was a hand gesture and they were fired. My attitude is, is like, this is the luckiest fucking job in the world. A lot of people want to do it and I get to. And I'm very thankful for that, you know? I want a story of something crazy, like maybe a roadie experience where you see a roadie literally burying a hooker's body for his guy. Um, there's definitely some bodies buried. Uh, luckily, uh, because I was the girl, I think I didn't get to see the bodies. I mean, I've seen OD girls carried out and chucked into cabs and stuff like that. What I mean, did you see on Michael Jackson's tour? Well, in, in, uh, that was one of the biggest and weirdest tours I ever did, and it wasn't like any other tour. And that was pretty much the tour that got me to say, I don't know that I want to do this for the rest of my life. Really? Yeah, because if this is what hitting the big time is, that's not what I want. So we were in a riot in Bangkok because he wouldn't get off. He was playing Nintendo backstage, and he wouldn't stop playing Nintendo. And people who had paid like a year's salary to go to this gig were really pissed off. Right. Justifiably so. You know? Suddenly not seeming like the great humanitarian. Yeah. Right? Um, so what is rock and roll to you guys? Um, for me, what it did was it took me around the world. You know, I always felt when I sat down at my drums, I had some, something to prove because I was a girl. And, and it kind of gave me that extra bit that I needed to like play my heart out, you know? My life has changed clearly just because of music. And I am very thankful for that every day. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I, like Patty, I grew up in a little town and by the time I was 19, there wasn't, weren't many countries I hadn't seen. You and shined a light on the world. I, <laughs> That's cool as shit, you know what I mean? For real, like, Literally. whoa, write that down, okay? <laughs> you know, and, and um, I got to see the world. I got to go everywhere and, and you know, sometimes I saw a concrete hole and yeah. other times I would wake up with 500 bucks in my pocket, nothing to do, and I was in Vienna or I was in Karachi and it was like, you know, I would just go get lost. And, and that's a, that is a great thing to have been able to have done with your life. I really admire you guys and I think you're also smoking hot on top of it. Uh, and uh, to me, rock and roll in one word, to be not a sexist means pussy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> But all kidding aside, my mama was right. A man is only as valuable as he can respect his ladies. These ladies have had to work their ass off and have had a lot of shit heaped on their shoulders, but they've carried it with grace and style. They're beautiful, they're talented, and they're amazing. I want to thank them from the bottom of my heart for showing me how much love and dedication it takes to be a road crew member in this great, amazing machine called the Gypsy Dildo of rock and roll.